A previously unseen memo is providing potentially damning new evidence about the plot to overturn the 2020 election results by Donald Trump and members of his inner circle. The memo, which was obtained by The New York Times and has not been verified by NBC News, was allegedly sent in early December 2020 by Trump lawyer Kenneth Cheeseborough. Cheeseborough was one of the co-conspirators identified but not charged in the Justice Department's most recent indictment of the former president. In the newly obtained note, Cheeseborough outlines what would become known as the fake elector scheme, which falsely claimed former Vice President Mike Pence had the power to block the certification of the state's votes and, on and, January 6th. And, and to, to lie about people who were going to be the electors, fake electors, Ooh. to create a fraudulent slate of electors. And this, this is what Trump's defenders are calling free speech? No. No, no. That's, that's not that's, free speech. That's like an attempt a criminal to scheme. defraud Americans. Cheeseborough allegedly their wrote to another Trump lawyer about what he acknowledged was a, quote, bold and controversial strategy, but claimed... He was not necessarily advising this course of action. Despite trying to distance himself from the plan, though, the Times reports that just one day after sending that memo, it ended up on the desk of Trump's personal lawyer, Rudy Giuliani. Oh, that's just it's not good. Not good for Rudy As or anybody. As for the fake elector scheme itself, Cheesebro even admitted that the Supreme Court was likely to end up rejecting the plan. But even in that case, he claimed that airing it out publicly would, quote, buy the Trump campaign more time to challenge the election. Jonathan O'Meara, this is as clear as day. They're coming up with a fraudulent scheme that they know is illegal. Wow. They know the Supreme Court will reject it. But what are they trying to do? They're trying to illegally delay a constitutional proceeding. The Constitution of the United States says that the electors get together and they, they, they count the votes. The date is January the 6th. And here is a, pl a, a plan, a, complete, a completely illegal scheme where they're going to get fake electors, have people lie that they're certified to be electors, and then have Mike Pence put these fake electors before the United States Congress. And in so doing, still what, 7 million, 8 million, 10 million? I mean, how many millions of votes are they stealing from people in swing states who are elected by actually the real uh, electors who, again, are part of a constitutional process that Trump's trying to undermine? Again, the argument that this somehow free speech to have this illegal scheme that they knew was illegal... <laughs> It's just, it's stupid even for Trump supporters and certain editorial pages. Yeah, one of the charges Trump faces is violation of rights, trying to fraud, deprive rights. Right to vote is one of them. And they were trying to disenfranchise millions of Americans here by tossing out their vote and trying to install these fake electors. And this memo uh, puts in one place, sort of A to Z, this scheme that we have known has been out there and now is going to be clearly central to the prosecution against Trump uh, in Jack Smith's case there uh, in Washington. This idea that it would, they knew the Supreme Court, even a Supreme Court that was pretty Trump friendly in most ways, had ruled against them on election issues. We have documented how badly they fared in courthouses across America in the weeks after Election Day, November 2020. There was something like 63 and 1, and their one win was a very small procedural one. They knew this wasn't going to pass legal standing. That said, they were trying to buy time. They were trying to buy time to push for more cases. They were trying to buy time to install these fake electors and then put it to Mike Pence on January 6th. And if he had said, well, look, we've got competing sets of electors here. Let's throw them all out. Let's just put it to the House. And that's how Trump wins, because the math worked in Trump's favor there. That's the scheme. That's how they wanted to stay in power. And that's how Jack Smith is going to proceed with his prosecution. Yeah, I just add this. I mean, this reads to me like a plot, an overt plot to subvert the vote presented publicly 
as an insurance plan in case the courts somehow intervened on Trump's behalf, even after, as Jonathan said, 63 or whatever decisions <laughs> against the Trump campaign at that point. Uh, the other thing that stands out to me, though, is just how little, and again, most of the Trump's actual lawyers, the professionals in the Justice Department and at the White House, did actually care about the real-world consequences, the laws that may have been pushed or violated. But there were a select few uh, people here, including uh, Kenneth Cheeseborough, and John Eastman, who simply it didn't occur to them or they didn't care enough about what the consequences and spill out of such a strategy were. I mean, Cheeseboro in this case is saying this is bold and controversial. In another memo, Eastman, I believe, <laughs> said, you know, something like, you know, well, there may be rioting in the streets, but that's why we have the Insurrection Act, as if, as if a little sort of blood in the streets was just the price you pay for, for this type of strategy. And it, it's remarkable, I guess, to me, maybe a little bit uh, shocking. Uh, that people were willing to just let their minds wander to those places uh, in pursuit of what they understood privately to be controversial and perhaps even illegal steps to subvert democracy. Well, and, and you, you, you look at, at their interactions, Caddy, and again, they understand that this, this scheme is, is, the, is not going to be seen as legal by the United States Supreme Court. They say as much. Mike Pence confronts Donald Trump later, saying, even your own lawyer is telling you that this is not legal. The Supreme Court's going to overturn it. But they talk about how this will cause delay. It will cause confusion. It may cause riots in the streets. And when that's brought up as a possibility that this will cause riots in the streets, they say, yeah, that's why we have the Insurrection Act. That's why we have the Army to put down riots that they're responsible for by pushing something they know is illegal. Yeah, I mean, part of Donald Trump's defense, presumably, um, when this goes to trial, will be, well, I genuinely, as he said last night, New Hampshire in that, you know, rather moist appearance, I will... S sweaty, I genu yeah. Sweaty. Yeah. I genuinely <laughs> believed that the election had been stolen. This is what my lawyers were telling me. I had, I had good lawyers like Eastman telling me that this was the case, and so you can't get me for that because this is what my belief was. Well, then Jack Smith will come back back with this kind of evidence. You know, these, the, here you are. You were presented with a plan, but you were also told by people like Mike Pence that this would not go anywhere, that this was, um, that the Supreme Court would not uh, think that this was OK. So you're going to have a lot of this during the course of the trial. But maybe part of this was just to, I mean, we talked about this a lot around 2016. What was the aim of Russia? It was the aim of Russia was to sh sow chaos and a sense right. that democracy was not strong and dissatisfaction, so dissatisfaction in the democratic system. And when you read this secret memo, it sounds like that, that part of the aim of this is to show, is to sow chaos and to, and, and to make people think the system is not working. Right. I, I, it wasn't about actually having a system that works, a process that works, they knew the Supreme Court was going to overturn it. It was about creating the delay, creating the chaos. And if riots happened, as they said, that's why we have the army. That's why we have the Insurrection Act. Then we can use the Insurrection Act, get the army in the street, put down the riots from people whose votes have been stolen, and then Trump can, can declare martial law, which is basically what they're talking about doing. And yeah, this is what Russia, Wall Street Journal editorial page, this is what Russia was trying to do in 2016. This is what Russia admitted they were trying to do in 2016. This is what the head of the Wagner Group bragged about saying, do you remember how successful our campaign was in America in 2016? Hmm. I mean, come on. Russian hoax, you shame yourself every day. You shame yourself every day if you don't see a linkage here. Right. If you don't see the linkage of the Russians trying to sow confusion and then Donald Trump on his own, learning from people that he's always admired, on his own, to just create a process that will sow confusion, that's illegal, that will sow delay. And if he's lucky, 
will create riots in the streets, and they can use the Insurrection Act to declare martial law. And you call it free speech. I call it un-American, and guess what? Most Americans agree with me and not you. You're disgusting. You're absolutely disgusting if you're going to forgive this type of behavior. And I say that to the Republican establishment that's been going, oh, you know, there's two standards of justice here. Hunter Biden's laptop, Hunter Biden. And over here, we're talking about an illegal scheme to overthrow an election to get riots in the streets so Donald Trump can declare martial law, and you're saying there's some sort of legal equivalency? There's some sort of moral equivalency? That's grotesque. And what's so sad for you is you know it's grotesque. The entire Republican establishment knows it's gross. You've got a guy trying to steal an election, and you've got a prosecutor that's trying to bring him to justice. Mm-hmm. And if this guy were a Democrat, you'd already have him locked up. Jack Smith's trying to bring this guy to justice. And what do you do? You sit back silently. You talk about, oh, two standards of justice. And then you're silent as Donald Trump threatens a federal prosecutor, an officer of the United States court system, saying, I'm coming after you. Silence. And you wonder why you keep losing elections.